Good evening, it's good to be with you. Lately, I've been thinking a lot about love and freedom. With the 4th of July coming up this weekend, when I hear people talking about the freedom to not wear masks without any discussion of love the neighbor, and as we continue to live with the ways that we have to have conversations and make decisions and listen to one another with this country's original sin of white privilege. So I turn to Paul in Galatians. Galatians 5, 13 and 14. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. In Galatians, throughout the entire book, but especially in chapter 5, Paul is talking about freedom and love. He reminds us of two main points, there's many points, but two main points. That love is a verb, and freedom is for serving. Bryce Morgan tells about God's love and freedom in a parable. I invite you into Bryce Morgan's story. The main gate of Thompsonville Penitentiary had nothing particularly appealing about it, except that it represented freedom for those who were walking through its doors in the outward direction. Tom Riley was doing just that, although he didn't know why. At 15 years old, he had recently been tried as an adult because of his extensive involvement in the violent world of organized crime. So how was it possible that he, Tommy Riley, was being released? As he walked toward the main gate, he noticed two people standing on the other side, on the freedom side. As the main door swung open, he recognized that one of the two was his girlfriend, Jessica. She instantly threw her arms around him and began to plead with him to come with her. There was a party that all his old friends were throwing for him. It would be just like old times. But as he turned to the other individual, it took him a moment to place the man's face. Remember me, Tommy? asked the older gentleman. As soon as the man spoke, Tommy knew who he was. He was the very judge who had sentenced him to life in prison. Tommy, I'm here to give you a second chance. I've taken care of all the charges against you so that you can come with me and serve the younger boys in an orphanage I've started. But there's something else, the man said calmly. Since you are a minor and an orphan yourself, I've decided to adopt you. You are now my son, Tommy. I understand that you would be tempted to see me through the lens of the past, but I'm asking you to trust me. Tommy was stunned. He looked at Jessica, who was still pleading with him. And then he looked back at the man who was supposedly his new father. This back and forth happened several times. Then he finally dropped his head in confusion and great joy. Of course, it's a parable. But what we know is that freedom is something we could never imagine. And we know it's a gift. This is how we have the audacity to love ourselves. Notice that the commandment says, love your neighbor as yourself. So somewhere along the way, we learn to love ourselves. But what we see is not this self-made person. We accept ourselves for the freedom that God sees when he looks at us, that God has claimed in us, and the one that God cherishes. We are declared children of God because God loves us. We are declared free because God has freed us. And he invites us into this kingdom work without any reminder of our sin and our past. Instead, he says, you are mine. Live as free people, and then in that freedom, turn and serve your neighbor. From this place, love is a verb, and freedom is for serving. Paul's understanding of love agape love was not some sentimental, warm, fuzzy Hallmark movie. Instead, he reminds us it's this self-giving love that we see most obviously in the life of Jesus. This kind of love goes far beyond what the law demands. Anyone can follow rules. 
But to have this life of constant service, we needed someone to watch and learn from like Jesus. Now, as I've said many, many times over the years, where two or three are gathered, there is love, and there's also going to be conflict and annoyance and things that just drive us crazy. Rachel Held Evans once said, the good news is you're a beloved child of God. The bad news is you don't get to pick your siblings. So we live in this world with all God's children. And we take Paul's words in Galatians very seriously because he's looking to the life of Christ. He's reminding us of freedom and of love. We hear in the next verse, right after the ones we listen to, about the opposite, if we live the opposite way. 5.15 says, If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. The words, the verbs that Paul uses are like animals who are having a fight to the death. Do not be like that, he says. That's what happens when we cave in on ourselves. That's what happens when we only worry about ourselves. Because not only do, are we miserable, but we see other children of God as rivals. And we are like wild animals who fight to the death. So he reminds us, love. Love each other and live in freedom. Love is a verb. Freedom is for serving. Nadia Boltzweber, who's a Lutheran pastor, says, My job is to point to Christ and to preach the gospel and to remind people that they are absolutely loved. And all their mess-ups are not more powerful than God's mercy. That's what we're all called to do as baptized children of God. To love, to be loved, to share love. And we live that out of the freedom to serve. In his book, The Easy Yoke, Doug Webster tells a story about a fresh-eyed college student. He volunteered to spend a summer working in housing projects in Philadelphia. He also had really come to really understand his faith through campus ministry. So he was so excited to go and tell people about Jesus. So he gets dropped at this huge tenement housing. And he goes inside the dark hallways filled with garbage and smells that he'd never been exposed to. He climbed up a flight of stairs and he knocked on the door. A woman greets him with a screaming naked baby and smoking a cigarette. So he launches into what he had rehearsed. He gave her his Jesus speech. She didn't make it too long before she yelled at him, said a few choice words, and slammed the door in his face. He was devastated. He went out to the street, sat on the curb, and cried. And while he sat there, he thought, oh, who am I? How could I ever think I have the audacity to tell about Jesus? So he went down to the local market. Because what he thought about was that naked baby and that woman smoking. That's what he knew of these two people. So he went to the market and bought a box of diapers and a carton of cigarettes. He went back and knocked on the door. And when the woman saw what he had, she welcomed him inside. He diapered the baby. He spent the day holding the baby, playing with him, changing his diapers, even though he'd never changed diapers. The woman gave him a cigarette, even though he never smoked he, he joined her and had a cigarette. He spent the day holding this baby, taking care of him, and smoking whenever offered a cigarette. At the end of the day, she said, why would you do this? What is wrong with you? He didn't have all the answers like he did earlier. But what he said, he talked a lot about love and freedom. He said he didn't know everything there was to know about God's love, but he understood love and he understood freedom. The woman said to him very softly, would you please pray for me and my baby that we can make it out of here alive? So he did. Love is a verb. Freedom is for serving. Now it looks different for all of us. We might not be where this college student was. We not, might not be the bishop of the South Dakota Synod. But each of us lives each day as love is a verb and freedom is for serving. And freedom, remember it. The law, the greatest law that Jesus says is love your neighbor as yourself. This is hard, heartbreaking work. It's also the joy of what it means to be called a child of God and to call ourselves the kingdom of God. And we know 
We know the love of God and we understand love is a verb and freedom is for serving. And we celebrate it. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, fill our hearts with the love that you freely give. Make love our first and last thoughts. May we love others and freely give to them. Make our spirit a spirit of joy, happiness, and love for both our friends and enemies. Help us love as abundantly as you have loved us.